um, I just want to welcome everybody to this very special New Earth broadcast at which we're announcing the convergence of the Earth Guardians and the New Earth Youth Council. Like I said, yeah. we've an all-star lineup today. Really, really excited for this show. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just introduce our first guest. We've got uh, Jean Marie Polino, and she is the New Earth Operations Director. So I'm going to hand the ball off to Jean Marie, and she can speak a little bit to uh, what New Earth Project is all about. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm honored to be here with all of you. I know that um, one of the passions that I had coming into New Earth was actually working with the youth. It's kind of where my background was from before I came into New Earth, um, the New Earth Project. And one of the things that we actually promote and share as, and bond with is sovereignty and self-empowerment and that is one thing that was always a passion of mine with um, the youth that I worked with and that involves anyone ages 8 through 29 years old and living from the heart and feeling free and feeling self-empowered and using your own wisdom versus what's out in front of you and questioning everything and just knowing inside what, the, what where your wisdom is and how to use it. It's um, one of the foundation pillars for New Earth Nation and just thrilled to have a youth council involved and active within the group. So New Earth Nation is actually um, fairly new, um, but one of the things that I would like to promote through it is the idea that each person on this planet is a sovereign being and to stand in your own power and I find that true with a lot of the people that are coming and being born into the planet now and um, I'm honored and just thrilled to see the people that have come into this youth council and kind of standing in the background and watching them in awe with their, is their wisdom and their living from the heart and I am so looking forward to hearing what they have to say but yeah, we definitely want to put up some links to the Youth Council through North Nation and also offer out all the different portals that we have available there with uh, communities and being able to get in touch with each other by location or by area of interest and joining communities that are forming everywhere on the planet. And um, I don't want to tie up too much in that end, but definitely want to share some links through the broadcast that people can check out after, but I don't want to take away the thunder from what we're trying to do right now. So I'd like to welcome in many of the people that are on the call here who are ideal for promoting and sharing and forming this great group of young people that are going to take over tomorrow. And I kind of bow down to you, and, and I'm, I'm waiting to hear what you have to say. Awesome. Well, thanks for that brief little introduction there, Jean-Marie. Um, next, we're going to introduce Susan Terry, and she is the faculty director of the Zero Point Learning uh, platform. So, um, yeah, I'm going to hand the ball off to, uh, to Susan. I am so honored to be here with such wonderful people. Um, I came into New Earth last September. Um, and I should probably share a little bit of my background in, in, to give an understanding of how I got here. Um, from the time I was in grade one, I always knew that there was something wrong with the, the world and the system that we were um, being brought into in education in particular. And um, I always had an imagining of, of what education should be. And, and it certainly wasn't the world that we, I was being presented to me was not the world that I knew was supposed to be here in, in its totality. There was, you know, awfully wonderful things, but uh, there were some things that were a little shaded and off. And uh, the direction that education in particular was, was heading and, and continued to um, head was something that I found was very disconcerting and, and I was very disenchanted with um, what was being presented to children and youth. I always knew that I would imagine how the world could be changed and I always knew that there change and that it would be up to the youth to make a difference and change the world. And it wasn't until 2006 that I, after having raised my children through a 
an, an education system that was even more broken than the one I had entered into, I realized that something had to be done and had to be changed. And I felt that it was my calling. I felt that that was the direction that I needed to turn to, to create an education platform for the world that would empower the youth to fix all the um, damaging effects that have taken place through environment and pollution and food and all of those things and the disconnect from nature in particular because I know we are all connected in that and we are all interconnected uh, with all life forms in, in our world and in, in our life. So um, I started on my venture of creating that education platform and in 2010 I founded Peace School which is a Paradigm Education Academy of Creative Enlightenment and I had been doing a lot of research and connecting with people all over the globe and I always felt that this was something that was meant to be global and I always knew that there was potential for a utopian world. Um, people used to think I was crazy and call me a dreamer and um, I didn't ever feel, I never felt that way. So I knew that there were people out there who had the same vision and, and uh, feeling. So I had established a, a school in um, 2013, a peace school, and it just felt um, the way it was, it was a, 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 a more of a pilot, and I realized that the way it was going was not the right direction, that it needed to be more presented on a world platform. So I did not reopen the school last September, and at the in the same at the same time, I encountered these people who shared uh, the vision that I have and were very supportive of the Peace School. And I had come across a magazine called New Earth Oracle, and I had also signed up with New Earth Nation when it first launched. And uh, so when I read the oracle, I was so moved by what I read in there, and I thought I saw these photos in there of the um, uh, renderings of the New Earth bioarchitecture, and I thought, oh my God, that's the vision I had of what the schools would look like. And exactly, it was exactly that. It was like seeing my dream right there. And so I um, was telling these friends that I had met about this New Earth Oracle and how this is the place where I needed to put this school. And uh, they said, oh, we're members of New Earth Nation. Would you like to meet Sasha Stone? And I said, you're kidding. I said, I have to. So they connected me and here I am and uh, I have since, I felt like I've come home. This was a place where all these people are bringing their visions, we're all connected in this vision and we are all here to restore and, and recreate, re-enchant this new earth and the people of my generation are here to lay the foundation but it's going to be the youth of today who are the ones who are going to carry out this mission and, and make it viable and possible for generations to come. And I know it's a, a reuniting of all the nations of the earth in that sense of in recognizing what it is we are really here for, who and what we really are as divine beings, and um, recreating that earth for that reconnectivity. Anyway, um, so I was so, in, in working as the, with the faculty, in the learning faculty, I was so excited to learn that there was a youth council that was, was uh, forming and um, so it was really important to bring the youth in as part of the development of our e-learning platform and our um, schools that will be developed or, or I, I like to call them discovery centers rather than schools because I think of schools as institutions, it's kind of the old so we're moving into the new and we're creating these discovery centers where um, there is the, the children have um, live, yeah. hands-on experience in the world. And um, it's, it's, each one has their own special gifts that they can bring to the world and each one has their own personal supercomputer within them where they can reach out and, and uh, share the wisdom that they already have and carry within them. And the facilitators of the school, or guides as I like to call them, will help those children along the way, along their journey, and provide them with all the tools that they need so that they can explore the world 
in a new way and develop to their fullest potentials and capabilities. So when um, Brittany uh, came on board our team, I was so excited to meet her because she is one amazing young woman who has uh, is in uh, Florida right now and she's going to college, but she has some wonderful aspirations. And I would love so much, Brittany, if you would share a little bit of your background and your aspirations as well for the Youth Council. Sure. Right, um, so as Susan said, I am resonating in uh, Florida, Southwest Florida, and I attend Florida Gulf Coast University. I'm a junior currently studying environmental studies. Uh, it wasn't until actually last semester when I took the university colloquium course um, that I was given all of this information about how uh, unsustainable living uh, truly we were doing. So with that, um, I began to kind of search out, um, elsewhere for the solution. And um, ironically enough, it was through permaculture. So um, it's actually a design science in which we can kind of heal the earth in ourselves by planting trees and um, healing herbs to really get us back to our true essence of being. Um, it's definitely my passion as far as getting us back to um, our grassroots and eating the right foods because you are what you eat. And um, to be healthy is to be whole. So really passionate about that. Um, as far as with the New Earth Nation, um, I was officially logged in and a part of the project about a month ago now. It was um, January 16th that I was actually initiated to help with the project and I was extremely um, you know, grateful to be a part of this and honored um, to be reconnecting again with like a soul family. It really feels like the tribal just reuniting back as one to where we need to be. Um, and with the youth council, uh, youth council, I would like to really just um, be that leader. I was never, I never took on any leadership roles uh, in school in the education system. I was always um, busy working or doing extracurricular activities, and um, I really feel like now I'm, I'm ready to take on that role to kind of gather the youth and inspire each other through teaching and. Um, we all just have so much to give and to learn from each other through communicating and sharing um, our projects and ideas and aspirations. So I'm excited to be a part of that and um, with uh, the Earth Guardians as well to um, combine those two and really um, get this thing moving. Beautiful. Well, thank you both um, Susan and Brittany. And we're really, really excited to have you on board, Brittany. It's, um, it's really a, an awesome undertaking, and um, yeah, um, I couldn't agree with you know all the points that Susan made more. She kind of covered all the bases there. Um, really, is going to be you know up to the younger generations, you know my my generation and also uh, Jutescott's um, generation especially. So um, speaking of Jutescott, I'm going to go ahead and introduce him. Um, he is just an amazing, amazing young man. He's already accomplished so much um, at such a young age. He uh, has been working in environmental activism uh, really his whole life. He gave his first speech at a climate change rally when he was just six years old. And uh, he's been working to bring awareness to things like fracking, um, ecosystems collapse, and, and other forms of environmental degradation. Um, speaking around the world um, at, you know, um, UN meetings and and also um, spreading awareness in the form of his music and uh, he does um, conscious hip hop or, or conscious rap and it's just incredible so I'm um, gonna go ahead and introduce him and, and um, have him speak a little bit to his, his personal journey alright um, yeah I'm really excited to be here today uh, with all these incredible people and it's just amazing to see um, how this is all coming together you know this collaboration between these guardians and, and everything you guys are doing, and it's going to be. Um, I'm excited to see where this goes. You know, I'm excited to see how everything's going to move forward and how we can support each other, how we can help each other, how uh, as individuals, you know, we're really powerful, right? But as a community, as a team, as a group, uh, you know, we can change the world, right? So, um, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and, and how I got into all of this, and. Um, so I was, as as um, as Dane said, I was um, 
about six years old when I when I did my first public speaking engagement, and uh, ever since then I've been doing everything that I can uh, in my community as an individual, um, my family, my school to protect the earth, the air, the water, and the atmosphere so that my generation and those to follow will inherit a healthy, just, sustainable planet. Uh, and it's you know it's definitely been a struggle because it's uh, I don't know I think it's taken a lot of my time you know every spare moment that I have goes into um, doing what I can to protect uh, this planet for, for my generation and for all the generations to come that will inherit this planet. Uh, and so it's, I think, a huge milestone in, in everything that I was doing. Um, you know, it was, was kind of when I, um, a result of, of how I got um, into being involved with this, you know, people ask, you know, you got involved at six, what, what, um, made you want to, want to be a part of this. And so it was pretty pretty incredible because um, a huge contribution to who I am today and what I do and, and um, the reason that I that I spend so much time doing all that I can to protect the earth is because of my connection to to the planet, uh, my connection to the natural world around us, my connection to the forest and the mountains uh, of Colorado and the rivers and the lakes. And I think it's really easy to be able to protect something that we love. Honestly, um, it's not a drag. It's not like having to do homework, and staying up late, and doing it because I have to or anything. It's um, it's really incredible to be able to do something that we love. You know, I think it would be the same if we were uh, connecting to any of our passions. You know, if we're passionate about something, um, the earth is my passion. You know, and there's there's you know a few different ways in which I, I express that through public speaking um, to to groups all over the all over the country and into different parts of the world. And um, as, as Dane said, you know, I do a little hip-hop, um, environmental, uh, lyrical hip-hop that really focuses on positivity about solutions. A lot of rap we hear today is, is garbage, you know, to be honest. Um, and, you know, we're, a lot of young people, you know, that's, that's what we listen to as youth today, you know. Kanye West and Nicki Minaj and... Um, and, you know, they're not, they're not selling a great, a great thing, you know, everything's about consumerism, about buying more, having more, living bigger, living better, and, and uh, it's, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to take that, um, hip-hop, everybody loves hip-hop, everybody's listening to hip-hop, make it positive, you know, make it so that it's something you want to listen to, um, make it, so something you're learning from, that you're, you're growing by, by listening to what's on the radio. So that's kind of our goal with music, and, and so just definitely, what got me in, to this point is is definitely my connection to my culture, um, as well. Um, my father raised me in the Aztec tradition, um, and I learned that all life is sacred. I learned that all life is connected, and that as individuals we have a responsibility to protect the earth. Um, that we are we are the caretakers of the planet, um, and I don't know just a lot a lot of the things that, that that my father taught me growing up. I was in the ceremony since I could walk, um, as long as I can remember. I've been, you know, out of uh, a lot of different ceremonies. Um, as soon as I could walk, I was learning our traditional our dances and the Tukigiski. I was uh, learning how to speak our language, Nahuatl. My name, Shitezcat Donati, comes from my language and from the Mexica people. Um, and so I was very deeply immersed in culture since I was very young. And just with that came so many teachings that we're all connected, each and every one of us. We all drink the same water and breathe the same air, walk on, upon the same earth eat the same food that comes from the Mother Earth. And we all, no matter who we are, where we are from, whether we believe in, in our world's greatest problems or whether we believe we can do anything about it, we are all impacted by the, by the health of the planet. Um, and so a lot of those teachings went into my, um, keep on from the computer, sorry, <laughs> but go into, have, have been put into my, my engagement in my education around climate change. Uh, and that is definitely one of the hugest issues that I'm working on right now. As far as environment um, and, and the devastation and the destruction to our planet, I believe that climate change is one of the greatest issues we will ever face as a society, as individuals. Um, right now, we already see, you know, we're hitting tipping points every day. You know, every time we see a huge natural disaster that's, that's impacting the community somewhere in the world, it's one step closer to having that natural disaster happen in our backyard. Um, and more and more, we're going to see that this isn't just a global issue. It's a, um, an individual issue. It's a community issue. That impact us all over the world, and um, yeah, I believe it needs to be addressed. 
And that's what that's why I do what I do. Um, I'm working with with an organization called Earth Guardians that was founded in 1992 in Maui, Hawaii, by my mother. Um, and when I was nine, I started up what would be called or what would be considered the um, the third generation of Earth Guardians. And so there's been two other generations before me, led by my siblings, and my older siblings. And now, so I kind of founded the third generation of Earth Guardians, got that off the ground here in Boulder. Um, so we did a bunch of community action, you know, got involved in a lot of the big issues that were directly affecting us here. And um, all of those included um, climate change, how that was impacting us here locally, water health, water pollution, how that's going to impact this generation, uh, pesticides, uh, the migration of coal ash into our freshwater drinking systems, um, drinking water systems, and um, GMOs, how that was going to impact our agriculture nationally as a nation, how it was going to impact small farmers that are working to grow organic crops. Um, uh, plastic bags, the impact plastic has on our oceans, the impact plastic has on wildlife habitats, on ecosystems. Um, so there's definitely been a lot that we've done here locally that has connected us to a lot of world problems, a lot of huge problems in the world. And I think it just as, as we got older, as we got more professional, as we began to get involved with bigger ideas in, in more, um, I guess, high-profile events and high-profile um, meetings. And um, you know, we started to grow. We started getting, getting invited to speak all over the country, um, different parts of the world. Um, I gave school presentations in middle schools, sometimes elementary schools, high schools, colleges, um, all, over, all over Colorado, all over the country. Um, I, I talked to them about climate change, just the general state of our planet, where we're at right now, environmentally, socially. Um, and how climate change will impact pretty much every aspect of our lives, uh, socially, economically, um, as, as individuals. And I have a presentation that I give around fracking and the industrial, um, and that's everything that's happened since the industrial revolution that is tearing apart our planet. Um, also, a, one that I think is very important is our connection to our culture. Um, as indigenous people, you know, as we are all indigenous to summer, we're you know, returning to those teachings of our ancestors and my ancestors. Um, and changing our mindset, changing the way that we think of the world, changing we think about the things that we have on our fingertips, um, knowledge that we have, resources that we have, the water that we can drink every day, and shower and, and waste and use. I think something that you said that was very important was about the industrial age mm -hmm. and how it's impacted. It has done more damage in that such a short time to this earth than all the ages before. Like more damage has happened in the last hundred years than than in any other time, and the onset of the industrial age, um, all the things that they've done to make a more progressive, successful world, commercial world, and all the mindsets that go along with it, have altered and shifted everything from the reality of our own being and and what we are in reality to it's a disconnect. It's a complete disconnect, and and things like ego and all of those other things and greed and and um, not only the destruction but it's our our minds are polluted. Not mm -hmm. only is our world polluted, but our mind is polluted in the first place. And and a lot of the change is only going to come about when there is a shift in the education because the education system is geared to that industrial mindset. And it's geared to control. It's geared to to uh, a dummying down rather than in a building up, so that there's control. It's all about control. Yeah, if you think about it, this generation is going to be inheriting every problem that we see on the planet. Exactly. War. Um, our generation is going to be inheriting those problems, and what's most important is how we're going to be dealing with those problems. We're not learning that in school. We're not learning how to deal with a natural disaster. We're not learning how to grow our own food. We're not learning how to build freshwater catchment systems. You know, there are these kind of things that are essential to, to our existence in the future as we go down this path of, of more and more destruction, of more and more despair. We're not being worth it. And again, this starts with our school systems. This generation should be being trained how to deal with the crisis that is already at hand. So if we cap carbon now and we start to slowly go down, we're still already going to see massive destruction all over the planet. We already are. We already have. Um, and so we're going to do everything that we can to shift that education system, as you're saying, it's so, so crucial, so, so important, because these are the years where this generation, in, in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years, we're going to be the politicians, we're going to be the doctors, we're going to be the lawyers, we're going to be the parents and the, and the adults of the future, and if we're not trained right now, 
future generations of screw. So it's all about <clears throat> everything that we can to slow our our, our, our peak of, of contamination and destruction of, of carbon emissions and, and bring that down and teaching people how to deal with that and teaching how to people to respond to that. I think there's a whole other way of, of uh, providing power for the world that doesn't require something that's polluting and destructive. And um, the means in which we live and how we, we build our world and the resources we use to create our homes, all of those things need to change. We need to shift to a more natural way that is in harmony with nature, not against it. The, the way things are in our world today are the antithesis of what is healthy and it is going to create a, a sustainable world. And as you said, we're caretakers of the earth. We all are. Everyone who's here is a guest on this planet. We're visitors. And we're here to, to maintain it because if we don't maintain it, this is the world that sustains us, and if we're not maintaining it, it is no longer going to sustain us, and we will wipe ourselves out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It may be a few generations down the road, but it will happen. You want to say something, Brittany? I can tell. Yeah, just because, I mean, like I started with um, the education, I wasn't aware of any of the issues. I, had. I mean, you know, I, I've heard of climate change before, but just kind of understood that that meant, oh, the ice caps were melting, and we just need more, whatever. Um, but like I said, this these couple past semesters, like being um, brought to the light of all the unsustainable farming practices, the way our food comes, and um, all the waste, what we do with our waste, and the energy that we use, all the water, it's um it's 100% unsustainable. And um, with the population growing, um, it's expected to grow, you know, what I study in books, of course, and what scientists have predicted, um, up to like 9 billion people. If we continue to um, to live this way, there's absolutely, <laughs> there's literally no uh, resources that can, um, it's, it's as easy as that. And well, it's I interesting, because when I was young, there was 1 billion. When I was <laughs> young, there was 1 billion on the planet, and we thought that was a lot. Yeah. So look how it's exponentially it's going to grow. Mm -hmm. And it is. And I mean, I myself, I want at least two or three kids so I can regenerate and you know teach and raise them in a way that I can empower them to do the exact same thing that you know that we're speaking of right now. Um, <laughs> that means a lot to me for them to have a healthy planet to live on um, with land that you know soil, <laughs> healthy soil. It, really begins with that and a third of the topsoil has been completely eradicated through the practices um, that the current farmer to agricultural um, industry is using. Right, yeah, uh, monoculture is just horrendous. I mean not only does it um, you know deplete the topsoil but it also prevents nutrients from you know being utilized um, and it, it just exhausts the soil and, and doesn't give it time to remediate and to revitalize and you know to to balance itself out. Whereas you were speaking to permaculture earlier, and that is just an amazing practice. Um, but once again, these changes really begin internally, and it starts with the shift in consciousness. And in order for that to be reflected in the external reality, and, and it starts with a change in you know the educational paradigm. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just really exciting, you know, to to bring these sorts of new models, new modalities of thought, um, to public attention, and you know, to work in in new ways that are a reflection of the harmonious nature of you know, of creation, truly, because that that's what it is, you know, it is harmonious underneath all of the, you know, the nonsense that we've built on top of it, you know, beginning, really beginning in the industrial industrial age. Um, but you know, it's 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 not too late, not at all, um, to to um, remediate the harm that we've caused. But we have to take action now. And I think what you are doing, Shudas Cat, is is uh, just phenomenal in this new. Um, I think it's called Rise. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Rise? Because I think. There's something there, and, and this is what we need, is we need this kind of activity, this empowerment of youth to go out and make these changes and make the demands. We ha you have to demand it. 
to give back your sovereignty. Yeah, yeah. So, so, dang. <laughs> just so pumped hearing what everybody else is saying too. And I, don't know, I think it's amazing because we can we can see that there's you know huge problems we're facing. But even even better than that, we can create the solutions. And okay, so so I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about Rise. And um, Rise was a, a project of Rift Guardians that was dreamt up um, a little bit less than a year ago. And the intention behind it um, was and still is to be able to engage climate leaders, engage young people in becoming leaders, um, in finding the solutions to climate change, uh, and to inspire and engage, educate this generation of rising solutioners. RISE is spelled R-Y-S-E, that's an acronym for Rising Youth for Sustainable Earth. Um, and it's definitely still in the works. Um, so one of the things that we decided is that we want this to be entirely led by youth. Uh, we want this program, these programs that we're going to be offering, we want this movement to be entirely led by young people. And so what we did is we put together um, an application process where young people from first just around the country could apply to, to be on this youth council. That's a, have um, past experience in movement building or in some kind of community action. Um, it was a whole process, but pretty much it allowed it so that we have 18, now we have about 18 incredible, inspiring, amazing young people from all over the country uh, that are that are ready to to begin to plan these actions that we got for um, this next year. Um, and so we're, we're going to start up by uh, creating a training. That we're going to be bring together all of these all these youth council members um, at this training in New York. Um, we're going to be working with um, a, a, a organization called Wildfire, um, and they do trainings for, for leadership trainings all over the country um, and different parts of the world. So they're amazing. So we're going to be doing a training with them to train these these youth we have selected um, to train them to be leaders to the fullest extent that they can. Um, give them all the tools that they need to be able to go back home and create the solutions, to create the movement that they, that they want to create, that they want to see in this world. So that's really exciting. That's definitely the bit, next big thing. And from there, we're going to be um, building, what do we want this next year to look like? So we're going to have big projects that are going to be coming out that young people, um, adults, you know, youth of all ages can engage in um, all around the world that is going to be coming out. And we're going to be planning this for some sometime around April. Um, and then we have, we're definitely going to work to build up to the COP21 um, summit, the United Nations summit in Paris, um, build up some concrete action that we're going to be um, presenting there, hopefully fly out some young people there to represent um, RISE. And so RISE is really just working on training these first 18 young leaders so that they can go and train the next 18, and the next 18, and the next 18. Um, and it's going to grow exponentially because what we need more of right now in this day and age is leaders. You know, we got enough followers. Um, but we need one of us is, is some leaders. So uh, that's very exciting. That is something that is definitely still in the works, and we're still building and we're still shaping what it looks like. We also have an incredible council of, of, of wisdom council, and it's, it's um, adults that have been in this movement for forever, you know, musicians, scientists, um, inspirational speakers that have been part of this movement for a very long time. We've got people like Kirk Nugent, Dan Jones, Alvin Arnold Duke, um, so many amazing people. And so we're just very blessed to be able to be connected with them. And they're really just there to help offer guidance, to help offer support, wisdom to this youth council to, to support our growth as individuals, as young people, as leaders in this world. Um, because, you know, a lot of people say, you know, we are the future. You know, it's true, I guess. But we're also here now. And we're not going to wait until we're 21. We're not going to wait until we graduate college or until we can legally vote to make a difference. Because youth from 6 to 16 to 64 to 106, we can all make a difference and incredible impact in our lives and our community in the world right here, right now. No reason we should be waiting. So RISE is working on engaging, inspiring, and putting these young people into action, giving them the tools, everything that they need to be able to go into the community, change the world, and find the greatest solutions to the greatest problems of our time. Yes, and, and I think the key to that is, is that's beautiful. And, and, and I think that the key is to um, become aware. I think it's about awareness of what the things, little things that we can do to make a difference every day. Um, different ways of conserving or different ways of 
um, living. I mean, we live in such a throwaway world where everybody buys all these commodities. But have you ever thought about where do those commodities go? Where do they end up? I mean, here we are in a computer, and it's wonderful. It's got this great technology so that we can communicate like this all over the world, and it has great purpose. But then there's all the garbage and the pollution that's on this system, too, that has gotten distorted and taken out of context. And then you have these computers that all of a sudden are designed so that they are throwaway. Why aren't we creating things that can last? Because we know they can be created. It's like the first cars that were built. They were built precision. Everything was precision so that they would last forever. That's why you could still have old Model T Fords kicking around. You know, people have them as antique cars, but they actually work because they're precision made. But the stuff that's made today is made as stuff. It's something so that somebody can make more money, so it's going to break down in five years and deteriorate, and then it's going to go out and pollute the world somewhere, and you have to buy a new one. It's all about people wanting money, money, money. And, and I think people are worshipping the wrong God, which is, is the mistake. Um, <laughs> you, if, you, if you do that, you're, you're, you're dissociating your own energy, your own essence, your own self, your own being, from that. You're, you're going for something that is going to, can be blown away, can be burned, can be gone in an instant. And you're giving all your energy to that rather than to the creation that you are and the, the magical abilities and potentials that we each have that we're not even aware of. People use less than, what, 10% of the brain power on this planet, most people, the majority. Mm -hmm. use less than 10%. So what about that other 90%? I mean, it's not about the brain power so much to speak, but what is it that is helping this brain to function? Where, what is that energy? And what is it we can do with that? And how can we create a better and more beautiful world with connecting with that power that is also connected with nature and connected with the universe? We're connected to one another. Dang. Mm -hmm. I'll answer that first. I don't even want to have to think about that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's um, really important just to remember, you know, with us being so disconnected from it, mm -hmm. um, to kind of just get your feet, your bare feet on the ground again, and you'll really just feel how alive everything is again. Um, what I love is really just listening to all the sounds. Um, it blows my mind away at all. The, all the, like, it all we're all at different fractals of the universe, you know, kind of practice, you know, working in our own niche um, in the habitat <laughs> itself, you know. We're, we need each other, and we've completely forgotten that. <laughs> right. We've been living in a paradigm that's been very focused on the self and very egocentric, you know, focused on self-preservation, even at the expense of, you know, damage to your peers who are you truly? I mean, we're all, you know, in this interconnected, interdependent, mutual system. And so, you know, whenever you throw, you know, whenever you litter, you're just doing it to yourself. It's going to come back around. And it's, um, we're really moving into a state of consciousness that's centered in the heart, you know. And I think it's no coincidence at all that heart and earth are the same word, but the H is at the end in earth and at the beginning in heart. And, you know, you see this go green, go green. Well, green is the color of nature. It's also the color of the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the zero point of the heart, all is reconciled, and you truly understand what it means to be unconditionally loving and what it means to be part of something much greater than yourself, you know, much greater than your ego. And when people begin to realize that, you know, their, their, their actions begin to reflect it as well. And, you know, Consciousness just begins to expand beyond its previous confines. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, and, and I like that you point out the zero point, because the zero point is that point of, of where the knowledge starts. It's that nothingness out of which everything springs. It's like the black hole. And when you get in touch with that zero point, you start to realize that you really know nothing. I mean, when you consider all that you have been taught to know and you think you know, when you let go of all of that, what you thought you knew is is um, like 
a speck of dust in the universe. Like it's so minuscule in comparison to the vastness of what there is out there to learn. There is so much out there and there's so much that we can't even see because we've got so many veils over our eyes. We've lost the sight and the vision to see beyond the form, see beyond the materiality and connect with that energy, that feeling of your being, the beingness that connects us all. And that goes with the heartbeat. It's, as you said, it's the heart and it's that pounding of the heart and that connection that, that brings us all together and it all stems from love. Love and light and sound, as, as Brittany mentioned, the sounds of birds, for example, are just so phenomenal. I love to sit in nature and just listen to the birds or to listen to the water splashing up on the shore, things of that. And you start to hear the rhythm and the harmony, and, and, and it's like a symphony that, that starts to happen. It's wonderful. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm just going to say that I think this kind of relates a little bit to, to music, right? Um, where where there's however many different genres or styles of music. Not everybody's going to like every single type of music. Right? As as a musician, as an artist, as a, as a guy that listens to music daily, um, you know, I'd say that most musicians will agree that you have to respect what every type of music has, has contributed to, to the world, to what music is today. Uh, and, you know, like all of it. But you got to respect it, you know. And what I think about this is, as far as our connection to nature, our connection to everything that's happening around us. You know, if you think about it, you know, life is a miracle, right? Um, let me. The quote I, I spit a verse real quick of a, of a song I'm writing right now. Oh yeah, we be honored. Yeah, go ahead, man. Awesome. All right, so um, I wrote this actually on a on a bus ride back from from the school trip that I had. I um, was in the car listening, making some music, and I wrote this verse, um, so, I'll, so I'll do it a little slower so you guys can, can listen and understand the lyrics, but it goes like this. So. Open your eyes, mm -hmm. take in the world around you, listen to the hum of the world, pay attention to the sounds too, breathe the clean air like it's your last breath, fly like an eagle, plant your dreams in the earth, cultivate the creativity of conscious poetry. When you hear this conscious flow right away, you will know it's me. The life that we have is simply a miracle. What you choose to do with it is entirely up with you. One person can cause the seas to rise, the water to run dry, or bring hope to someone's life. So no matter who you are, we can all make a difference. Believe in who you are. Don't let anyone tell you different. And so the first lines of that are, are open your eyes and take in the world around you. Listen to the hum of the world. Pay attention to the sounds, too. Breathe the clean air like it's your last breath. Fly like an eagle. Plant your dreams in the earth. That was kind of just streaming the way that I feel about the world around me um, in a bar. Um, oh, I got chills when you, when you gave that. Wow, that really resonates with the heart. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, I think that, that, you know, maybe we're not all going to run outside and, and throw off our shoes and, and jump into nature, and that's not everyone's thing. But I think that as, as people on this planet, more than anything, it's important to acknowledge our dependence on Earth, acknowledge and appreciate what we do have and what is possible because of the world around us. And I think that we owe that to the Mother Earth for all that she has given us. Um, and, you know... Since the evolution of every living system on our planet up to now, every living system that has evolved up to now, a lot of them are, are, are disappearing, are collapsing, are being destroyed. And so when we think about that, you know, life has been going on forever, and it's going to continue to go on without us. And so while we have this moment in time, um, this moment where, where it can seem kind of obsolete, you know, when, when everything is happening around us in, in an instant, this moment that we have right now will be uh, and that's all we have is now. Exactly. Exactly. But we can do exactly. what we can do is, is decide what we do with this moment that we have. And and I think that it's it's beautiful to see what that's gonna look like in the future for, for everybody. I love it. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well and I think the key word is listening. Mm. You have to turn off your mind, shut it down to listen, empty it. And just listen with your heart, and I think that's where your music comes from. Yeah, beautiful. Well, um, I don't know if anybody has any questions here. 
But uh, this is very fulfilling, and I hope we'll do more of these in the future sure. because I think it's vital what you're doing in empowering other youth to uh, take charge and to recognize, to wake up, and to listen to what's happening in the world, to really, really take a good look around and see what's happening and see how we can make a difference to bring things back to harmony and to peace with, uh, in ourselves and then without because we are the world we want to create and want to see. So we have to be the change that we want to see in the world. Right. And, and like you said earlier, I mean, the current paradigm of education is not providing that sort of information. It's not, you know, and thus a lot of kids don't have an incentive because they're just not aware of the extent of the issues. And so it really does take, you know, peers getting involved with their peers and, and spreading the message that way. And that's exactly what you're doing. And I just, I really commend you for that. And um, I know... I know you probably wouldn't be able to do anything else if you tried, but nonetheless, it really takes you know a lot of bravery and a lot of courage, um, and and um, you know a lot of confidence and trust. And yeah, I just I really honor that, and um, and really want to thank you for for coming on and you know um, wanting to be a part of what we're doing. And um, yeah, so just thank you so much. Yeah. I think this would, on this note, we have a, a, one of your wraps that we've got queued up that we'd like to kind of play out at the end of, of this. Do you have anything you want to add, Brittany, before we go? Um, just if, you know, people, just to encourage people to really check out the project itself, New Earth, um, and join the Youth Council page that I created on Facebook. You can find that. It's just New Earth Nation uh, Youth Council. So it's just a page where I kind of set up to where the youth can go and you know, and share their um, projects, ideas, whatever it is, to kind of inspire each other through that outlet. And also to connect with uh, Shudas Katz's um, website, earthguardians.org, I think is, yep. is a good place to go. Yeah. And check out also the Zero Point Learning Faculty on the New Earth Nation. Uh, site. There's quite a bit of information up there, and I will be posting this YouTube on that page as well. Uh, so it'll be there for others to see. I have a blog set up underneath the one page, the main page of the Zero Point Learning Faculty. So um, I, I don't know if we have Santi here, if he could. Do you have something you want to add before we go? Good. <laughs> Like I said, it's been an honor to even be a part of all of this and to connect with you guys from all across the world. I'll be heading off to Costa Rica shortly, so I'm excited to learn some of Yeah. Um, I'm stoked for this partnership. Um, I feel like it's, it's perfect, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I think these, these kind of collaborations is, is what is going to push us into uh, push us into the new world. Uh, I think with with um with all this collapse and, and destruction that we're seeing is also bringing a rebirth because I think it's going to take you know these natural disasters that we're seeing these these crises that we are seeing are waking people up all over the planet and even more than that the hope that is being given by this generation the movements that we are building the young people across the planet that we are inspiring as individuals right here right now on this call. Everybody that this is reaching, that is one more person that is going to know our message. Whether you agree with it or not, it's going to be hard to ignore because this next decade, we are going to be doing all that we can to protect our planet, our future. Every decision that we make is a vote for or against our future. Every choice that we make impacts the kind of world I'm going to have in 10 years. You're going to have in 10 years. Future generations are going to have in 50 years. And honestly, I don't want to be doing this for the next 10 years. Not because I don't love it, because, you know, this is my life, right? I was kind of scared to see what's going to happen once we solve big issues. And there will always be more things to do, and I'll focus on my music. But I think that I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and I'm, and I'm praying and I'm, I know that as a society, if we can create the greatest challenge that humanity has ever seen, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that we can solve it, that we can turn it around, that we can come out ten times wiser than we did going in with more connection to the planet, with more connection to one another as human beings, as individuals, with more awareness of the sounds and the light and the love and the beauty around us in every moment of 
our lives and every moment of our existence. And so I will not be doing this in 10 years. That is my goal, to not be doing this in 10 years because I believe that... The, You'll be living it. Yeah, we'll be living, we'll be living the dream that we're creating right now. So mm -hmm. That's right. On that note, I think this is a great place to wrap it up with a wrap. <laughs> wrap up. <laughs> wrap it up. Leave that thing on future matters. Don't leave us so nerd that is torn and battered. The ruling generation's gotta wake up now. And our generation gonna show you how. Why are you sleeping? Why are you so blind? When I look around, I think you lost your mind. How can you diss the earth this way? She gives us our life each and every day. But you sit on her and you ask for more without thinking what future generations will endure. Who will be left by the time you are done? The children will suffer from your dysfunction. Don't live as safe. Our future matters. Don't leave us on earth that is torn and battered. The ruling generation's gotta wake up now. And our generation's gonna show you how. The air is so polluted, it's getting hard to breathe. What's this a thing? Now there's no more trees. Water is rising in the sea. To unleash the storm because of your disease. One about the ring and you better take heed. Join the earth with your greed. The storm is coming. You better beware what you're leaving us. Children just and fair. Don't live as if our future matters. Don't leave us inert that is torn and battered. The ruling generation's gotta wake up now. And our generation gonna show you how. Youth are uniting all over the planet. We're not taking our awesome earth for granted. We stand together. And we change the game. Our movement will go down in history of fame. And all the people who've been fighting for so long are the heroes who have made our best to strong. United together, our message will be heard and we'll create a world that we deserve. So live as if our future matters. Don't leave us on earth that is torn and battered. The ruined generations gotta wake up now. And our generation gonna show you how. Live as if our future matters. Don't leave us on earth that is torn and battered. The ruined generations gotta wake up now. And our generation gonna show you how. Live as it, our future matters. Live as it, our future matters. Live as it, our future matters. Time tells story of all that's good. Show the world we all share the same good. We have to protect our united force and get reconnected to our light source. We're igniting a generation of inspired youth to stand up together and tell us the truth. The people are rising like a wave in the sea to change the direction of our destiny. So live as if our future matters. Don't leave us annoyed that is torn and battered. The ruling generation gotta wake up now and our generation gonna show you how.